right, I'd like to call to order the Carroll County Commissioners meeting of March 22nd, 2017. Can you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'll wait a motion for the approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion. Second. I'm ahead of <laughs> okay. Uh, it's been made, motion made and seconded to accept the minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you ready to begin four minutes early? I certainly am. <coughs> the first thing on the order of business is the registry of deeds. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Public input. Oh, sorry. I happen to read this agenda. Would you please state your name? Hmm? Would you state your, your name, name for the record, please? Joe Duchesne. Um, I guess. Uh, Mark, you probably don't know, but I work at the uh, county farm. Okay. My job is basically taking inmates out to work on the complex. Okay. Um, you know, doing the mowing, the snow removal, or wood, hay, all that stuff, right? That's my basic job. I've been doing it for five years. Love this place. I happen to see this, and I last year this was put out, again, I think, to bid. The company that came in either had no interest or their price was too high or something. I don't know the details. What was put out, Joe? Mm -hmm. You didn't say what was put out. Uh, was there a, a bid put out or something to get the water department oh, to take water. over? Okay. The water, I yes. guess that's what it was? Yes. And for whatever reason, they decided they weren't interested or their price was too high or something. I don't know the details. <clears throat> But here we had a, 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 an employee with 20 years service who was licensed to take care of the water. So he did a fantastic job along with Will DeWitt and uh, he was laid off. So now we have to have a new person because we're required to have two licensed personnel. So another employee's been licensed and now is doing a fantastic job, Mark Ayers. I see nothing wrong the years I've been here with this water department um, and it's a case of this isn't broken why are we doing this again trying to get out bids to or have a discussion about it I don't see the point um, things are running fine and I just think it ought to be left alone um, I don't know who put this suggestion on here but um, I don't see a problem with it and I think it just should be left alone, and until there is a problem, fine, then look outside. But right now there is no problem. So I would suggest that we just leave this alone and let these boys do their job. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I believe that's going to be discussed later on in the meeting. Oh, okay. Sure. Address. Sure. Okay, as I was saying, with anybody else, any other public input? Anyone? Sorry. Um, the registry of deeds. Um, yes. Good morning. Good morning. I came in to update you on a process that Mr. Babson is familiar with because we've um, been going through it for about a year now. But I'm not sure that um, you are. 
The contract that we have with our vendor who provides our electronic land records management system was up for review and I was asked to put out an RFP for it last summer, prepared the RFP, advertised it, sent it out, and we um, got back two comprehensive opportunities. Um, and we chose one and voted on it and accepted a five-year contract last fall. And this is the reply to the RFP. Um, in, in the process, it's a five-year contract for a updated modern land records management system. And we started implementing it um, at the beginning of the year. It's in the process now. And one of the aspects of it is that we will not be last this time um, to implement electronic recording in Carroll County. Um, Carroll and Coas are the only two counties that are not doing it at this point in time. So the process of electronic recording involves a vendor. The vendor is the middle person who has a contract with both the submitting party and a contract with us. And the contract with us says that what we will do the contract with the submitting party, which is usually a, a title um, company, a lawyer's office, some authorized contracted party. Um, the one with them says that they will abide by certain rules and conditions and abide by all our recording standards before submitting. And then the contract between us and the vendor is that they will collect all the fees, um, they will scrutinize the other party that is submitting and, and then they will submit to us the documents and pay us the, fund, the, the fees um, electronically the next morning. So because this is a contract, we have a memorandum of understanding that goes along with it. The rest of the updates and modernizations don't involve the financial part. So this vendor is going to be collecting the transfer tax, the LCHIP money, a lot of money, all our fees. And that's the point of having this memorandum. So I sent it out to you to review. Yes. Um, it will be, there are five different vendors that right now are acting as the middle man in New Hampshire. Um, I'm going to deal with two right now only. Um, the two that are the most long-standing and um, do the most business with the big banks and um, lawyers around the state. So this is the prototype for one of those vendors. Um, this is a combination of what both vendors asked me to sign. Then I looked at what other counties had signed and incorporated an additional item in here that the vendors don't know about yet, but they agreed to it with Hillsborough County. So I'm assuming that they will agree to it with our county. And that is at the very end, it's the indemnification clause. Nice. And apparently some of the vendors won't accept that, but I feel it's important. So I put it in and... Yep. It's the whole, it's page five and page six. Uh, page six. Page six. And it's the last paragraph that says that the company agrees to protect, defend, and indemnify and hold Carroll County, its employees, agents, officers, and servants, free and harmless from any and all losses, claims, needs, demands, and causes of action of every kind and character including but not limited to the amount of judgments, penalties, interest, court costs, and it goes <coughs> on and on. Um, the company agrees to investigate, handle, provide defense for, and defend such claims, demands or suits at the company's sole expense. The company also agrees to bear all of the costs and expenses related to, even if claims for claims allegedly are groundless, false, or fraudulent. This provision is not intended to create cause of action in favor of any third party against the company or Carroll County or to enlarge in any way the company's liability, but is intended solely to provide for indemnification of the county from liability for damages or injuries arising from the agreement between the company and Carroll County. 
So the reason I'm bringing this to you is twofold. One is to update you on what's going on at the Registry of Deeds, and the other is so that you'll you'll know what's going to be happening. And when you hear that Carroll County is electronically recording, yes, we will be. We hope to be um, soon. My staff tells me never to say the date, because <laughs> you never know if that date's going to hold true, but it, it should be soon. And um, so I'm going to be sending these out to the vendors, and hopefully they will agree and approve. Lisa, is there any initial cost to us? There's no cost for this part of the modernization, because it's all incorporated in the plan that was agreed upon last fall. This uh, indemnification, is that verbatim out of the Jersey Federal? It is. So I think that's very wise on your part to, to, to scan that, to find that, and to include it in ours, because uh, that offers a level of protection that uh, I think is, uh, again, wise. So I commend you for that. I did take time to read this over the weekend. Uh, I had a lot of questions, but your presentation, I, I'm, I'm all fine. Thank you. <clears throat> Ken, have we sent this to a lawyer to, to No. Um, and Lisa was working with them, uh, the one up in Lancaster. Yeah. Um, and, um, but this particular MOU, no. It did go through the scrutiny and was developed by the attorney for Hillsborough County back when they were signing, preparing their uh, memorandum of understanding. I should mention that that it did it was looked at with Hillsborough, but not with our attorney. Well, I know that because she said she got it from Hillsborough. Mm -hmm. Good policy to to use somebody else's law firm, mm -hmm. uh, county attorney, not have our own legal firm look at it. Are you asking me, or are you asking you, somebody else? Just I'm just tossing the question out. Will it be reviewed by our attorney? It has not yet been. I, I did submit it back in early April, early March, I'm sorry. Um, and the judgment was made to just not, but. Submitted to who? To Ken. Well, to to bring out. Firm. I'd like to have him be aware of what's going on. Uh, March 6th. If you want my opinion, I feel comfortable with that. But. Mark? Yeah, I, I do think it needs to be reviewed by attorneys, but I'm, if you guys are comfortable uh, with that, I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, if we can get legal work done on Hillsborough County's dime, that's fine with me. But, uh, but, the, but Commissioner Babson makes a good point. We need to make sure that this has had some sort of legal review. Uh, but again, if you guys are comfortable with it, I think that's just a matter of formality. No, no, normally we do. Uh, send most of our, all our contracts actually uh, for a legal review. But this one I felt, because it came from Hillsborough and it had the indemnification, yeah. that's what made me feel comfortable about it. And there's no cost, so. No cost and we can get out of it. Right. right. And actually, if I understand what this MOU it does, is it takes that contract and puts it into an operational mode, more or less. It's, the contract is a contract, but this is an expectation as and well. Yes, and it's just one tiny aspect of all, right. the, all the things. And right. Yes. yes. Right. I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share with us? We don't need to vote. <coughs> um, Is this an FYI? We that's all. That's all. That's all. It's an FYI. I'd like you to know what's coming down the pipe. Well, thank you very much for sharing and coming in. And well. Lisa is entering into an agreement with them. Right. So it's not. Have a vote. Uh, what would it be? I don't believe it's necessary. No. 
know, but if the office is independent of this, but oh, let, me, let me take a stab at one. I'll, I'll go too well on you. Uh, I move that we uh, we inform the uh, registry of deeds that we're satisfied with the provisions of the electronic rec reporting memorandum of understanding that she uh, has put together with uh, the two accepted vendors. And do you, do you feel comfortable with this? And I say that. Would you read back his... Um, Commissioner has a motion to inform the Registry of Deeds that the commissioners are satisfied with the MOU for electronic recording oh, yes. memorandum of understanding. Yes. I'll second it for discussion. Discussion? motion itself has no impact of authority because this does fall under the registry of deeds. However, I think there are times, and this is a, an example of it, is when the, the commissioners should join with the uh, registry on, on, a, uh, on something such as this. Uh, it, it shows that we're uh, communicating and supportive of each other and uh, we're aware of what's going on. In, it also uh, provides for a level of uh, assurance from the registry that the commission is uh, supportive of her going forward if, if something should come up, which I'm sure might. Yes. My peanut butter is kicking in, so I remembered what I was going to ask. Um, Lisa, can you speak? Uh, to us about why you only want to use two companies. I think you mentioned there were five that are available to do this. On what basis have you used this to do? It's new. It's going to be new for us. There's going to be a lot of new back-end um, modern stations coming down the pipe next month. And <clears throat> other counties that have started out have used one if you use one, you have all your eggs in one basket. So I've chosen the top two that are the, the ones that handle the most volume in New Hampshire, according to the other registers. Um, why not five? Because I don't think we need five. This is a process that you can add to at a later date if you want to. Um, two is going to create enough excitement in the office at the moment. I, I'm not sure how to ask this question, but are we creating revenue for these two companies and um, not creating revenue for the other three? Basically, is this a, a fair and uh, level playing field for these five companies? playing field based on a uh, study of the five that are out there and how they um, function in other counties. Um, I've been advised which are the ones that submit the proper type of documents and which are the ones that submit things that you would have to reject. Um, and advised about the liability of them. They all charge their, the submitter, a fee right. to report. They also all charge an annual fee to be able to submit. So it limits the playing field of who can use these methods. So the real answer to that is we're not giving them a level of playing field because the person that's going to submit them isn't going to go to the three that can't can't get in the program, they're going to go to one of the two that can, and they're going to get paid. You could look at it that way, but then well, again, if, if you were to go to uh, 
groceries, five different grocery stores sitting along the side of the road, and, and you knew that there was different qualities and different levels of expertise at various ones, would you just randomly choose every time you went shopping, or would you go to the ones that you knew you could reliably count on to provide the service? Well, I, I guess we're, we're, a new, we're, we're new at this. I'm having a hard time adjusting to or accepting that we're going to eliminate three before we even start. Why don't we start with a five and find out for ourselves which are the two best? Who knows what, where we're located, uh, our equipment. There's going to be some differences. There will be. There will be. And why not find out which one of the go for six months and find out which of the one or two or three are, 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 is better than the others. So why, I'll consider how, that. It's, it's certainly worth consideration. How much more um, confusion would that cause for you to have in your office? Well, it would be a matter of feeling. <coughs> it depends. It depends on how they their process, because you have to modify your process to their process. Um, so it would add more variables, for sure. I have heard that some of the vendors don't like the indemnification clause. Um, I think that would be a no-brainer. Here's the thing. The question I have on this is, if any of these other signers of the MOU, the two or the five, however many, uh, if they reject this, then we're, we're not, my motion doesn't include that we'll accept, we'll, we'll endorse this if this is accepted. So what's really got my attention is that it is in here. And so I think that's a good way of winning people out. If they don't want to sign it, then don't. And, and hopefully the two that have signed it for Hillsborough with the identification clause will sign it for Carroll. With well, I would, think, I would think so if they wanted business. But the other thing I, I have is... Our, our acceptance on this isn't limited to the number of vendors. It's just that this is the one you're going to have for all vendors, whether it's two or thirty-two. This is this is what this you is would what, be working with. This is what I'm proposing to you. So you're not opposed to having uh, other competent vendors participate. You want to be able to build this uh, at your discretion, which is your office. So I, I, I do agree with Commissioner Babson that we should open it up to as many competent vendors. But I do think it's your job to figure out which ones are competent. And you're saying two at this point. Two at this point. But you're not opposed to five at... No, but I'd, I'd rather go slow in, in, in the making here. There are other counties that have more and other counties that have agreements like this without... <coughs> Well, I think we're all in agreement that that indemnification clause is very important. Right. <coughs> Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Do you want to add in, in your motion, Mark, that, that somehow that we accept it, but only from those that will accept that? Could you read it back, the uh, indemnification clause? Um, Commissioner, I have some motions. Conform the registry of deeds. The commissioners are satisfied with the MOU for electronic recording. With you, you had been said with the two companies. With uh, with how about with all company. all competent that except the indemnification. That except the indemnification. And that will accept the indemnification. Yeah. And who, yeah, in who accept the identification provisions? Okay. Indemnification. Indemn indem indem indemnification? I can't sell linoleum either. How about cinnamon? No. I'm giving you credit. We need, we need the motion. Um, this is what it is. The motion's been made and seconded to accept. Uh, to support the MOU. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much for your time, Lisa, and I hope you enjoyed your day. <coughs> Ooh. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right, next on the uh, agenda is the OPEB award. Bid. Bid. Oh, we're going to award the bid. Four uh, minutes, we can see what. We did what last week? Or Yeah, when we opened the bid, I think there was um, one from New Hampshire and a couple from New York or something. Right. We opened the bids uh, last week on March 8th. Uh, the proposals were sent to five companies. Three companies responded. The response has an irresponsible bid. Uh, Jefferson Solutions, uh, Clifton Park, New York at $4,571. KMX, KMS Actuaries out of Manchester, New Hampshire at $5,000, and Aquarius Capital out of Port Hester, <coughs> New York at $6,000. I recommend that the board award the bid to the New Hampshire company, KMS Actuaries of Manchester, New Hampshire, at the bid price of $5,000. Keep it local. Uh, do the motion first, gentlemen, and then the discussion, or would you like to I'd like to have a little bit more on, on this because <coughs> I, I, I do favor doing local when it's appropriate, but someone just simply having a Manchester address doesn't necessarily mean that that corporation is local. They may have a local office, but they could be an Illinois company or whatever. So I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit about $500 difference between the one you recommend and uh, Jefferson Solutions. And I'm, a, I'm, 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 a, I'm uh, looking at your thing which says responsible, responsive and responsible bids. So if they're all responsive and responsible, the next piece that I look for uh, is low. And you're recommending one that isn't low, but, and, and I appreciate the looking at the it's a local company, but is there any other reasons no. if they're both responsible and responsive? Yeah, there, are, there are no other reasons other than if we have to deal with them, it may be a little easier to deal with a local company, and I would rather spend the money in New Hampshire than in New York. I, and I, I appreciate that, Madam Chairman. Uh, but I also want to make sure that people who bid on future projects will understand that if they are responsible, if they are responsible, and if they are low, then they will get the, get the bid. I, I don't, I mean, the, the local thing is important, and I'm not saying it isn't, but at the same time, our job, our fiduciary responsibility is to take the low price if they're both responsive and responsible. So I, I, I guess I, I guess I would, uh, make a motion that we would, uh, unless you had something else before. I'd like to add something on, sure, on, sure. on, on the KMS. Yeah. Uh, KMS has been in New Hampshire for 25 years. The, uh, the, um, the CEO uh, lives, in, uh, lives in Manchester with her husband and three children. So it is a you know I mean it is a New Hampshire-born company, um, has been for 25 years. Okay. Um, so I'd like to make a motion. Did you have anything to add to that before the motion? I'm trying to bring up some information on them here. It looks like they're a Manchester. Okay, I won't be. I don't have a motion to make. I'll make a motion that we accept the, uh, the bid from uh, KMS Actuary, uh, 
actuaries of Manchester, New Hampshire for $5,000. I assume that's a one-year contract. It is a one-year contract. Fortunately, it will cover two years. It will cover both I mean, 2016 and Now you're being a politician. It's good for one year, but it's going to cover two. How are we going to do that? It's, it's going to cover two years because uh, GASB 45 allows you to use a price or an actual uh, study for two years so that we can do it for 2016 and 2017. And then in 2018, GASB 45 expires. GASB 75 takes over, and that new ruling uh, is limited to one year at a time. So uh, is somewhere in the bid or in the proposal does it say it's for two years? It doesn't, doesn't need to. I have had the discussion with KMS, and they brought up the point to me that it was good for two years, but that in 2018 we would have to rebid. Okay, well, then I'll make the motion that we accept that. Uh, the bid from KMS uh, actuaries of Manchester, New Hampshire, for five thousand dollars, covering 2017 and 2018. 16, 16, 17. Okay, 2016 and 2017. I will second that. Any discussion? Uh, I'm going to be voting against it because of the the three things that I use, responsible, responsive, and low. And uh, so I will be voting against this motion. Any other discussion? Any discussion? Okay, we'll Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Nay. All right, is that all you need from us for that, Chuck? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, bidding out the water department, discussion. I believe that three weeks ago that we agreed that that was water now. Yes. I thought this was important enough that Ken should be here as he went out, but he's back, so we're all set. Okay. Um, it was three weeks ago, I believe, that we. Um, had a discussion about this and it was agreed that the water department and the sewer department would not be privatized, that uh, we were not in favor of looking for bids at this time. So I'm not sure why we are talking about it again. I don't remember that. I do, I do remember we had conversations that we were going to privatize uh, groundskeeping, plowing, uh, those type of things. But I was I thought that the water department was a different different things. And two weeks ago we had a, a presentation, and I think if I recall it, uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure how we left it. We said not to give any values because we were not yeah, right. putting it out to bid at this time. Right. So, are we putting it, is that being considered? That's not what I remember the discussion. The discussion was yeah, help um, that, that he wasn't to give you any prices now because you, he didn't, you didn't want him to, to Chip off disclose any other... Well, we haven't put out an RFP. No. So yeah. how, how could anyone give us any prices? Well, <coughs> yeah. let's, well, let's talk about the whole story here. Last year, Prior to this board, we did talk about um, looking at someone managing our, our water system and our sewer system. Um, so what we found out was in the water department you need one licensed operator, in the sewer department you need two licensed operators. Um, so we had a company come in, meet with Will go around, find out what it would take to operate our water system. That, that company came back with a price to the Board of Commissioners, which was given out publicly at that time. Um, so if someone wants to find out how much that was, they can go back in a minute. 
Um, at that time, <clears throat> uh, we decided to wait a year and see how things were going. And then, in another year, come back to the board again and, and, and revisit it. Um, and that's what we did, and that's what I did. Um, I did what I was told to do. Um, and so, here we are to discuss it. Either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it. Um, and, that, and that's where we are now, and that's what the discussion is about. Well, I'm, I'm for changing if it makes an improvement. I'm, I'm all for that if we need to improve something. But I'm also opposed to uh, uh, doing what the Army sometimes do. If something isn't broke, fix it till it is. I, I don't want to do that. If we have an operation that's working uh, effectively, mm -hmm. uh, then I don't think there's any need to change it. <coughs> if, however, there are things that uh, we, we can improve upon, I'd be interested. But I, 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 no one's ever told me, uh, not to the point that I understand, what need exists, what improvements need to be made that would facilitate us uh, privatizing. I believe the water company that was here two weeks ago said that they were doing a fantastic job. I think that they commented that, that they were doing a job. Um, I had done some research previous to this about other other counties that have a water system and how they handle it. And <clears throat> it was kind of obvious that they felt that having it within their staff was a positive thing. And how many uh, counties in that town, Jim? I believe it was three, but I'm not 100% sure because I didn't bring my paper. I had them <coughs> um, I have them in the office. Uh, I can tell you that. Sullivan, Cheshire, and... Um, North. Coas? Coas. Coas, Sullivan, get, you get and Cheshire. The same disease I got here. Mm. It's contagious, I'm afraid. Well, I am basically opposed to privatization unless it's something that's going to work. I, I, I don't, I've never quite captured the idea that we would save money by allowing a company to make money. No, and I had also spoken with the town of Ossipi because they had just recently taking back, I guess it's their sewer system, so I'm speaking out of turn. Sorry. Yes, sir. No, oh, you're right. Um, Mark's point is, I think really what's <coughs> at issue here, um, if we, we, we need the money from the delegation to, to fund the water system. I'm opposed to going over of privatizing it too, but we're going to continue to hear from the delegation, well, it's cheaper to privatize it. I would think the prudent thing to do would be if someone would give us a bid, no one would probably not going to accept it. Um, then, then we have something to say to go back to the delegation and say, okay, is what it would be if we had an outside vendor. Right now, I think we have a lot more to do than, than look at something that's working well. We have some things that are broke we should look at. Yes. To your point, Commissioner, I think it's uh, if that's what the delegation wants us to do, it's incumbent on them to tell us how much money we could save. Uh, become the, the delegation, uh, some of the members, uh, may wish that we were to privatize. Uh, I disagree with those members, whoever they might be. I don't think there's a dime to be saved by doing it. Um, if they, however, contend that there is, then I would say let them research and let them find out how much. I, I don't want to have us get into the habit of wasting people's time saying, we want you to develop a bid. Yeah, but we're going to ask them to bid when we know we're not going to accept right. it. I don't want to waste their time. I, I, I never liked it when it was done to me. And I don't want to 
don't waste our time because we have a lot but if, but I do respect that if the delegation members have a have a desire to go this route that it's on them to push that through their means uh, I'm not going to allow the tail to wag the dog I guess is what I'm saying we I don't support privatization there is no evidence given to me that we would save a dime or that we would improve services by doing so. Uh, I'm firm on that. However, I will welcome uh, those people who think we should to come with evidence to say that I'm wrong. But it's on them to prove me wrong. I'm not going to prove myself right. I'm going to support maintaining uh, the uh, water department as it currently is. I'm not going to support putting an RFP out. I don't think it's necessary. And no one's told me that how it would improve anything. I don't. I mean, just the sake of doing it or to satisfy, a, you know, members of the delegation, enough. I'm not doing that. Yes, sir. You don't have a motion on the floor, do you? No. I'll make a motion that we do not put the privatization on the water and sewer system. I second that. Discussion? That's yours. All the, the motion's been made and seconded that the water and sewer do not go up to bid. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. And, um, on to the next, which is the Whitehorse MOU. Uh, can we flip-flop? Can we do uh, Mr. Lucy from Honeywell? He's here. Come on up. Hey, Jim. Uh, Just to the end, Mr. Gentleman, so I can... Bob? No, no, on the, on that, or at the end or corner. That's why I'm here, so I can see you if you're here. I can see you. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Jim Lucy. He's from... The Honeywell Corporation. Uh, Bob and I went over to Inner Lakes uh, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, uh, to look at their solar array. And while we were there, they um, also gave us a tour of, of some of their energy saving uh, uh, they're not ideas, but they're energy saving. Improvements. Improvements. There you go. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Uh, and so Bob and I, uh, we reached out to Jim, and he came in and met with us, and uh, we thought it was um, a worthwhile effort to have him come in and talk to you about how we can save energy on our complex. So uh, Jim and Bob are going to give a little presentation. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you for the time. I will... Um give you kind of a brief overview of, um, and maybe I'll focus on interlakes because I know it's within the county. And Excuse me, Jim, do you want us to ask questions as you go along? Absolutely. Or, or yeah, no, I'm, I'm... Pile it up and... No, no, ask away. I'm, I'm here for, for you guys to learn and ask questions, so um, steer me in whatever direction you want. I'll try to give a brief summary of what we do, um, and then, uh, but I encourage questions throughout the discussion. Just, just, point of, just a point of order here. Uh, Madam Chairman, I thought the the uh, open hearing conversation concept that we use at Hales went very well. So I would ask that during this that we could relax a little bit and have this be more conversational. Uh, like Commissioner Babson pointed out, if we could turn this into a conversation. Okay. That sounds great. I, I, I prefer that, actually. Yeah. Um, so um, just as a brief background, um, as Ken said, uh, we got introduced to the Inner Lakes Regional School District where I've worked with them uh, over the last decade plus on uh, what the industry knows known as energy performance contracting. And it's really a design build method of construction where you have uh, a company such as Honeywell um, that guarantees certain performance based outcomes. And in their case, um, we have delivered about $7 million worth of capital improvements that have all been self funded by guaranteed reductions in their energy and operating costs. Um, in their case, the, when they had school building aid was in existence uh, and available to receive, really, uh, we took advantage of that in our first phase project. <coughs> and we also have taken advantage of um, 
utility rebates through the co-op, um, as well as some grants through the New Hampshire Public Utilities Commission. So that third-party money source has self-funded those improvements over time. And yes, sir. Jim, before you go any farther, could you further could you tell us what they've done at, at um, Interlake so we can get some ideas? Are they got solar yeah. panels? Aren't they burning chips also? They're burning pellets, pellets. Uh, similar to an infrastructure. Give us a little background yeah. so we sure. know. Um, so it's just a little bit of background. I, I, this is my 24th year with Honeywell. Um, we, this is pretty much what I've done throughout my career <coughs> in Greenland. Uh, and we've done this um, throughout northern New England. Per, I personally have uh, for the last couple of decades plus of working with customers like Inner Lakes. But Inner Lakes, like a lot of them, um, the energy field has changed a lot over my career. Um, I would say it's changed a lot just since uh, the pain point started to be felt in back in like 2008 or 9, oil spiked to, as you may remember, about $150 a barrel. Prices went up, people felt pain, they started to react. I think that was coupled with a stronger appetite to be sustainable, green, and that's pushed the industry as well. So back to Inner Lakes, um, we have done things to reduce energy demand. Uh, those classic things would be like lighting retrofits. Um, we just recently completed an LED lighting retrofit there with the latest technology. I think that's finally going to reduce the cycle of lighting retrofits <coughs> that have occurred over time. Um, we've done other demand side ret retrofits that affect both electric and I'll call thermal energy, the heating energy side. Um, those would include um, doing a lot of control upgrades, how they control their buildings, uh, looking at motors and variable speed drives to kind of reduce demand and consumption doing some mechanical improvements around ventilation and heating system upgrades to update equipment as well as increase efficiency. On the supply side we've done, uh, we have the, they have three buildings there, uh, one building in Sandwich, two buildings in Meredith. Um, their primary buildings are in Meredith, Inner Lakes Regional High School and Inner Lakes Elementary School. Uh, both of those buildings have um, on the energy supply side, we've converted them from oil based to um, dual fuel, if you will, they have an oil backup, but they have the primary fuel is wood pellets, uh, is their primary source of fuel. On the electric, uh, uh, also on the thermal energy side, both of those buildings have solar um, PV systems that are providing thermal energy to heat their hot water system. Most of their hot water needs in those buildings are provided off of solar energy. Um, we did one of those systems back in the first phase. I remember there was a Senator Johnson there that wanted us to have some level of um, renewable energy source there, and that was the most economically based one back when we did that in 2005. And then we did another solar thermal system back in um, this more recent project. <coughs> uh, on the electric side, as far as energy supply, we've done, we have one large, about 350 kW solar PV array. So if you can visualize it all the campus there, um, you have a, um, an athletic complex with artificial turf between the two buildings. And then at the end of that, if, if you, there's a hill that gradually goes up to a, a sports <coughs> practice field. That hill uh, led itself to a ground mount solar array where you have basically that whole area is covered with solar PV. And that generates almost enough electricity to offset any purchase power for their high school building. Um, and so coupled with that, and as part of our uh, approach and evaluation and planning, is uh, we've done a lot of infrastructure renewal there. So when I remember when we first got to Inner Lakes, um, they had uh, aging equipment like a lot of entities do, stuff that's at the end of its useful life. We replaced a lot of equipment. We installed new mechanical ventilation where they did not have it in buildings. There was a wing at the high school at the time that had no mechanical ventilation. They had some issues in their wood shop area that I recall. Uh, and in some buildings, they were actually overventilating, believe it or not, can you compare um, uh, you know, there, there, was, there was too much ventilation going on. So, so we've done a variety of things there to upgrade infrastructure, um, improve control and the learning environment, um, reduce energy demand, and have alternative energy supply. And all of that is done through the basic approach that we have, where it's all self-funded out of money that they would have continued to spend no matter what in their energy and their operating lines. Uh, or third-party money that they, we've been able to enable them to get because of the improvements that have occurred. And that's really the basis of this approach. It's to develop, uh, it's to partner with an organization to really fill the gap that I find are consistent variables with other entities. Time, resources, and money. And I know from visiting with Bob and Ken, there, there's, you've done a lot here. 
you have a lot of ideas, but sometimes resources and money get in the way of, of taking those ideas forward. And that's what organizations like ours do, is we partner and collaborate with you to help you with time, resources, and money. The first piece of that is developing a comprehensive plan of where, how do your existing buildings operate today, what's your infrastructure, what's your utility costs, that's the baseline effect. And then we compare things from that baseline, understanding maybe your master plan of where you want to go in time, um, some of your goals, some of your objectives, your capital plan look, and then we, that plan really evaluates how can we help you save money from your existing structure, how can we help you make those improvements and do it all in a formula that doesn't have any upfront cost impact and self-funds itself out of money that you're going to spend either the utility company or reinvest back into your facilities, if you will. Now, now what are these organizations called? Um, well, there's, well, there's uh, I, we're by no means the only company. No, that, no, but what's the generic name for them? Well, the the, um, the the approach from a contracting standpoint is called performance-based contracting. Performance-based. Yeah, performance-based contracting. Yeah. I believe when I was at Kingswood High School, they did something with the lighting. Yeah, there's all kinds of different versions and approaches, um, and. Uh, uh, that are out there that kind of kind of fit into you know this concept, if you will. But doing it comprehensive, um, there's there's a smaller handful of firms that would do a comprehensive. A lot of people do just lighting only or solar only, and I think that's one of the the aspects of this is that I think of the end user being in this business for a while. You have lots of things you read in the in the in the news. You can read articles about. You get approached by different firms that either are looking to upgrade LED lights or install solar systems. It can be really confusing around what's the best way to go, uh, what's the most cost-effective way to go. And I, that's one of the things that our organization does like in Interlakes is you independently evaluate your options, um, and then you implement the right plan for your goals and, and the one that's the most cost-effective over time. Our role is you know, when we get to planning, we give you an idea of here's the study results, here's the opportunities that we see to save, here's the needs that you have for infrastructure renewal, for example. Here are the funding options. Really, this is a return on investment based evaluation. You decide what, if anything, you want to implement. And then our role from there is to basically um, allow you to take this study and then put it into construction, where we would guarantee a level of cost savings annually in terms of energy to help manage the risk. So it's not somebody saying that they're gonna, you're going to project the savings. We'll actually back it up contractually with a guarantee. We'll help you find third-party funding sources that reduce the local cost. And then we'll, we'll actually implement the work and guarantee a fixed price for the work, which eliminates change orders, and then also a guarantee to ensure that the work's going to perform and if it doesn't perform, ironically, it comes back to, to get us because we're going to guarantee the, the, the savings piece. And if we don't install it right, if it doesn't perform, then we cut you a check annually. And so there's a, a level of accountability that's built into the structure. Does your company work with municipalities and counties or just schools? We do. You know, we work with municipalities. I, I would say um, almost exclusively the work I've done in my career has been in the public sector. Uh, majority has been schools, uh, being that in schools is where most of the square footage and infrastructure is on the public side. We have done some work on the municipal side, uh, and we have done some work on the county side as well. In New Hampshire? Uh, yes, but on a smaller, smaller scale basis. Schools has been the majority of it. But in general, buildings are buildings. Um, you're looking at the same types of systems, same types of applications. Um, your hours of use here are different. Your purpose of the buildings are different. But as far as energy infrastructure and energy systems, basic blocking and tackling, it's very similar for a county building, a commercial building, and to some degree an institutional building, as it is for a school. Good. Another question? A couple of quick questions, Jim. So you never become the general contractor. You, you do the design, um, suggest the build, and then it goes out for bid. Your customer picks their own. Um, no, we, we would. Or, or you we're really kind manage of a, the job. Think of us as the, uh, the planner, the designer, the project the manager, construction manager, the project manager, and the uh, and the general contractor. I mean, we're 
we're going to manage the whole effort soup to nuts. Um, in this method, you'd have a single contract with an entity like us who would be accountable for a specific result. Um, you've got one direction to point the finger, as opposed to sometimes you have, when you have multiple contractual points, um, you can have different directions that it goes. So yeah, we would be essentially providing all the, the core functions that would happen in the professional services to the construction world. And then even afterwards, um, to me, part of proper planning is to evaluate how you do operations and maintenance now, um, because um, it's not all about first cost. To me, it, it's a, it should be a life cycle cost view, and how well the systems operate <coughs> really as far as comfort and performance and, and those things. So evaluating that to make sure that uh, it's not just like a car. You can't buy a new car and assume that you never have to change the oil or rotate the tires. If you don't do that, it's not going to last as long, and the efficiency will go down. Same kind of concept with buildings. There are certain core things that need to be done. So that evaluation would occur, and we, we would have the ability at your option to provide some level of training or support to make sure the persistence of that return on investment occurs, and the local knowledge is here to support you on an as needed basis. Is Honeywell in the uh, solar business? We are not in the solar business. We are uh, we bringing some, some other company that you work with in? Yeah, we would, uh, so at Interlakes, um, we ended up working with Revision after a competitive process. Uh, Revision is a local New Hampshire-based firm. Actually, they're Maine and New Hampshire-based, but they're, they're probably the, one of the largest northern New England solar firms that exist. Um, we essentially, we eventually, which we do in all systems, we evaluate the opportunities. We basically specify what makes sense from a design standpoint, and then we work with qualified people to ensure the best pricing, and then that rolls up through our, our contract with you. So that's part of the evaluation, making sure we get, get the right size solar system that makes the most sense for you, and then we go out and help you find the, the best price for it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've had recent experience with this in the Conway School District, uh, well, probably four years now. Uh, we uh, we uh, contracted with uh, Siemens Industries. And what we did is we uh, had them do engineering because our schools, <coughs> three of them, elementary schools, were in serious disrepair. And so it's almost like listening to it, <coughs> to it again, deja vu. Uh, I like the process because the process allows us to uh, find a, uh, uh, I, will, I will say, an energy management concern who serves as a uh, construction manager. And... Uh, what we did when it, when it went out to bid is we kept ourselves to the facility committee of the school board uh, very up, up on who was bidding at the subcontract level. Uh, we didn't make the decision, but we were uh, a part of what that decision uh, would be uh, because there is, some, uh, there is some value to hiring local if you can. Uh, so it works very good. It, it, it can work out very good. Uh, I would say that based on this conversation, we're in the earliest stage of it, uh, where if we're going to go forward, we need to identify the need uh, and put, put out an RFP. Uh, I would say that apart from Honeywell and Siemens, uh, there aren't a lot of people that can do it to the level of expectations that we might like, but there may be. I, I remember back in the day when I was doing temperature controls, Johnson, was in business. I don't even know if they're around anymore. Yeah, there, there's a lot of firms that are around. Um, probably, it, it, so all these firms are in existence. Johnson, uh, Train Company, there are some um, other kind of private um, uh, firms, if you will, yeah. that are in the space. Um, uh, so conceptually, it all sounds similar. I think, you know, everyone's going to have a different um, longevity in the local marketplace, sure. experience factor. A lot of this comes down to project personnel. Uh, exactly. Shared philosophy, uh, and a very common way to approach this is um, from other public entities is putting out what they call re uh, requests for qualifications. Yeah. Similar to hire, hire, maybe hire an architect. Request for qualifications is a better way to go. Yeah, and uh, because you don't exactly know who's good, what um, what's the widget or the, the solution you're looking for. That's part of it is getting a qualified, capable, financially stable, locally local type firm that you 
you feel best aligns with you. And then from there, you develop that plan and uh, determine your options. And you may not ultimately have a plan that exactly fits. So, it, you know, that's, that's... Well, that's that's why we need flexibility uh, from the early stages on. I, you know, I do know that should we go this route, whoever our construction man, uh, energy management company is, it's going to be a long-term relationship. Yes, it is. It's going to have uh, bumps and valleys along the way. There's going to be people's feelings hurt, all that stuff, any, as in any relationship. So as much as the technical expertise of the company and of the technicians <coughs> and the expertise, uh, there also has to be that customer relationship piece because boards change. Egos come and go, but the, the mission remains. And uh, if this is where you think we should go, I, I think that uh, what we need to do is do a needs assessment and then do a some investigation. Re a request for qualification once we find out if we do need, once we know what the need is. Then do a request for call up for qualifications. Winnow down who we want to invite uh, to participate in an RFP. And that's going to take some time. It seems to me, if I remember correctly, there was a, a rather large initial outlay. Um, at the high school when they started this. At Interlinks? No, in oh. Kingswood. Yeah, I, I don't know who they Kingswood were. Kingswood is, uh, is that Wolf Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I don't, I'm, I'm not familiar with the Kingswood project. I can only speak from the vantage point of projects I know, which are largely ones. Um, uh, there's generally the approach is um, at its core, there's no capital outlay. So the idea is you're going to identify your baseline costs and we're going to reduce those costs, and um, you're going to then borrow money, if you will, and that eliminates the need for upfront, and your debt service should equal the, the savings, if you will, in a simple form. Over time. O over time. And so so majority of the time, based upon that formula, there is not a need for any upfront capital. That's one of the, a the benefit aspects of this, and it allows you to self-fund it through the third-party revenues or the reductions in operating costs. But each project can have its, you know, these are, you guys ultimately make the decision. So maybe in a particular job you're referring to, somebody wanted to use some capital up front or there was a requirement. I'm not familiar with that. But uh, the, the basic concept is not an upfront capital. That's one of the, I think, the benefits of this um, is that. But you are talking about a loan. You're talking about typically a loan. Most, most of the work that's done here is done through a lease purchase. Uh, so in support and footnote, lease purchase is not like leasing a car. Lease purchase is very similar to a bond where you build up equity and you have a dollar buyout at the end. Lease purchase has something called a non-appropriation that is looked upon as year-to-year -year debt. Very competitive with bonding rates. Um, so yeah, you, you use the borrowing in most cases. Doesn't mean you have to go this way. Each, each location has its own unique circumstances to eliminate that upfront money need. And the idea is that you pay back the loan with the third-party money <coughs> and the guaranteed reductions in your operating costs. So you're, you're not borrowing money that's tax levied. You've already got the money in your, in your budget, if you will. You're, you're reducing line items and reallocating them to debt service at a budget neutral level. Yes. So, but, but. Yes, sir. I, I have to add this but. I think for it to work, uh, we have to recognize how he said it, and I, I keep using it in the last two months, uh, two weeks. Without money, there is no mission. True. And so, to, in order to get to the point where we identify <coughs> what we need to do and how much money it's going to cost, uh, we need to put some money into it. And I'll just relate again what we did up at the Conway School District. Uh, we saw a need. Uh, we knew we had to explain that need to the public. In order to do that, we needed to convince the public. And it was a, it was a, a fight, but we did it. And not a fight, but a discussion. And uh, the, the voters voted $287,000 for us to do engineering studies. Uh, because we did it that way, we were able to get together some pretty good detailed plans. And the next year, part one of a three-part uh, <coughs> plan, uh, the voters, by 70, almost 80%, voted uh, for a 20-year bond to do $2 million worth of energy improvements in one of our schools. And next month, we're going to vote another two million for the second school. My point is that if you go slow and easy and you 
spell out what you need when it's time to get the money. If it's the cents, the money will be supported by the delegation. But we have to first understand what the need is. And we have to recognize that we're going to have to put some seed money in order to describe the cost of what fulfilling that need will be. You, you, uh, my sense is... Am I wrong on that uh, process? Uh, no, I, I think what um, any XYZ community does or school district uh, versus with the county, your buildings are all different within that entity. Your financial s status is different. Your well, I understand all that. I'm so, talking about the process uh, of getting process, people support. I have to yeah, know no, with what the, I'm familiar building with. Building your support is, is critical. Um, on my, I think a typical process would be something like that, or probably more more typical would be is that you um, you put out a request for qualifications, you select a, a partner or a vendor that to work with, um, you enter into something called a project development agreement with them, which basically says if you can come back with a project that self-funds itself in a certain period of time through the following sources like reduced energy costs and third-party incentives, your intent is to um, uh, endorse basically entering into a construction agreement if it meets that test of time. That allows then that vendor to go out and do that feasibility assessment on your behalf. Um, you determine the viability of that assessment and whether you want to move ahead with it. And once well, that you, assessment's going to cost money. In, in the typical approach that we would have, um, that assessment would not, that's part of the no upfront expenditure. Okay. We would, um, we would agree if you said, if you come back and you can self-fund a project in 10 years or 15 years, it's not going to cost us any upfront money or additional money. Um, we will agree to not charge you any money for that assessment. We will build into a, contra a contract like this project development agreement that says, hey, if we meet the agreement and you change your mind, we want to be recouped this amount of money. Right. Um, if we meet the target and you move ahead, that's built into the project okay. cost. Yeah. Um, if we um, meet, the, meet the target and you, and you change your mind, that's the only event there would be a, enough uh, cash flow obligation. So companies like us, certainly we would, um, as part of that performance phase, we're willing to kind of go at risk to demonstrate the value, realizing that through a relationship development, through a feasibility study, uh, there's probably opportunities of that. So you would suggest that what, what we would have in there is the caveat that uh, it won't cost us anything unless we back out. Correct. Correct. And then That's fair. And you would identify that number before we entered into an agreement. Correct. You like would, we would know, okay, we back out, it's going to cost us X amount of money. We would know that before we backed out. That's, that's correct. So the, the general steps would be... Um, if you like the concept, proceed with a with a request for qualification, go through a process of selecting a vendor, and then you negotiate this type of agreement we're talking about. And at that stage, you would negotiate what's the return on investment term period, what what is defined as self-funded, that kind of, and then that fee is negotiated and built into the contract then. And so there's no upfront uh, requirement of cash flow, assuming that you are serious on following through and the organization can meet your criteria then you proceed with the process. And I know that it's also important to line this up with your your budgeting cycle right. as well with uh, the county process. And so... Uh, the I just, well, I, I, at some point, what I want to hear from Ken is this I, uh, the request for qualifications type of thing, <coughs> but go ahead, David. Uh, Jim and uh, Bob, I guess it's been within about seven years ago we did an energy study in this building. We changed the lights, uh, switches, uh, automatic shutoffs, and um, we saved a lot of money going down the road. We built a new nursing home five years ago here. Has there been enough significant change in engineering and uh, science? make it worthwhile. Now, yes, when I sit here in the in the uh, in the middle of winter and we've got the heat going and the windows open so that we can uh, stay comfortable. Oh, that sheriff dispatches thing, we we got thirty thousand dollars to fix that. We shouldn't be doing that. 
project. We should be doing it tied to this because what we're doing is we're addressing the air quality in the dispatch room, but because of the way the hydraulic piping is, we do that at the expense of the heat in the uh, lieutenant's office. And so without even looking at it anymore, I know that you've got some things that have to take place in the piping in order to make that $30,000 worth the investment. It needs more than what we just. Thank you, Legion, for leading in oh, my question. Right there. Yeah, well, we're in a conversation I, mode. So I can the, uh, it. My my question was: Will your work or scope um, <clears throat> bring in things like changing uh, the heating system in here to make it cost? Um, yeah. No. I, I, effective. Um, so the answer would be yes. I mean, our, our personal approach is um, to do a very comprehensive, holistic initial plan. Mm -hmm. And you know that we don't operate where we just look in a linear way of let's grab the quickest payback stuff of the lights or this and completely forget the fact that Bob's got to maintain stuff after the fact and we can create a maintenance nightmare. Or you have a design flaw in the mechanical system or there's a control problem. So it's really a comprehensive evaluation that looks at existing condition, uh, where does it stand in its life cycle, where does it stand to current code, and what are performance issues you have within your buildings that maybe go back to original construction yeah. or a modification thereof. That's all part of a comprehensive plan. To me, you cannot do an energy audit in the right way and not look holistically. Right. Um, and so from that plan, in collaboration with your selected partner, um, you basically customize how you, what you, how you want to use this process to uh, solve problems and, and or a, a address opportunities to save. So you know, that's, to me, part of the discussions around is this really a payback-driven thing or do you want to look at this as a problem-solving thing? And the initial meeting that I had with, with Bob, you know, you have some things that um, you are you've been largely a lot of more updated buildings. You've done some a lot of things, but you still have capital needs that come in. And to me, that would be a component of this, is do a comprehensive assessment plan, determine what opportunities exist from where you last evaluated it. I'm confident that there are some things like LED lighting, even though you did it. Um, that in the nursing home alone, I think, would be a strong opportunity with the run times. One thing about lighting is that LEDs, I think, are finally going to get you to the point where the reduction in wattage is so much versus the fluorescent generation of things you're not going to make another lighting investment for a while. The life cycle is long, the watt rate drop is long. It's a good opportunity there. I think looking at things like solar that have really evolved in the last five to ten years, price points come down, we have some third party incentives in the state, that makes sense. And then I just think the core operational type things that exist around addressing deferred maintenance needs or performance issues in the buildings. And there's also a lot of um, demand side things that may come into play of enhancing your controls infrastructure, um, doing some uh, some other kind of things that help reduce plug load and computer loads and so on. One of the things that a variety of opportunities that would one, ultimately be flushed out in this assessment. One of the things that what, one of the things we can do, and I'm sure it would come up on any type of uh, assessment, is take a look at our pumps. Uh, Conway Elementary School. We had nine pumps to circulate the water around. They're all either on full bore or they're off. There was nine of them. We were able to redo the piping uh, and eliminate seven of them, and the two that remain are variable frequency drives. The amount of electricity that we're saving is tremendous mm -hmm. because we're not running nine pumps full time. We're running two at the variable. Right. So there's a lot of that that can be done. And, you probably and if we're going to go into it, I don't want to just put uh, thermostats on the walls and you know indicators in the computer. I want efficiencies based on, you know, is that boiler producing the right amount of temperature at the right time in the right flows? That I am convinced doesn't exist on this campus. Maybe in the nursing home because it's fairly new. But this building right now, I can walk around this big. I did this 35 years. I can walk around this building and say, "Wow, we're losing money." We're losing money through the windows. We're losing money through the through the piping. I bet you the uh, insulation, the pipe covering, is is lax. 
So I think if we dig into it, we're going to find there's an awful lot that we should consider, and that's going to require a plan over time, because you know you're talking some big money to make it right, and I think that's what we would find if we did a if we did an assessment that there's a lot that needs to be done. And that's going to be upfront money. That's not. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Something we're going to so borrow sure. and pay back on no, savings. No, we, we, we could be looking at bonds. <coughs> you, no, I think the... Well, that's what I mean, a, a loan or a bond or something. But, uh, I think the planning or assessment pieces, you, you don't exactly know that right. it's in a roadmap, and that, I think that's what a process like this can do, is you, if you go through and you select an organization, you work with them, that plan is going to allow you to determine what are your opportunities to save, what are your needs, and then from there you determine what's the what's the route to implement this plan over time. So okay. how long are your plans usually for? Uh, as far as how long it would take to do, go through the planning process if we were to start. Right, I, I have a farm, so I either have a seven-year plan yeah. or a ten-year plan. <clears throat> um, well, uh, I'll answer it two ways and kick me around if I'm not answering it direct. But um, so I would s assume. Uh, Developing a plan here as far as site surveys and all of that stuff would be anywhere between three to six months. Um, we oh, wanna, I think you'll, I think you Well, just from a planning standpoint, that doesn't include engineering and things that would come. Um, I think you'd also want to hit the cycle to be to do an audit right. You want to be doing it in, in a part of the time of the year that's, that's in heating mode like now. Um, so we're about to leave the heating mode. And so we need to incorporate that window of time in, in an audit. So that would give you a window of the planning. That doesn't include engineering, and it doesn't, we're not sure what the scope would be. Um, how long is the plan good for? I, you know, I think in any good relationship, I'm not going to try to give you a political answer here. It, it's, um, you, if you pick the right partner like we did with Interlakes, we constantly work with them to keep our eye around their buildings and the market around new things that make sense. That's why we've done a couple of phases there. Um, so I think any plan should be a working plan and constantly updated. Uh, over time. Um, technology doesn't move laser fast. I think anything we're going to assess in a plan here in the next 12 months probably going to keep you solid for the next three to five years. Um, but, you know, you have a lot of moving parts and buildings and different things that require maintenance, and I think that's part of the planning effort as well to help be, provide resources and support to keep you on the, on the course of the plan, if you will. So, hard, hard one to answer until you really roll your sleeves up and understand what your needs are. Um, and uh, and th those, to me, those are meaningful discussions, and we go from the concept stage to the tangible stage of knowing what you have in your buildings, where your goals and objectives. Because we work with a delegation that works, I think, on a nine-month plan. <coughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to hear what Ken might think about preparing a request for qualifications, if we, how that might look if we... I think this is a great time to be able to do this. Remember, uh, this is the last year of our jail bond. Um, so, you've spent it. You've spent. you spent that jail bond about eighteen times since. But what I'm saying Jason's is, you know, gonna spend it some more. it's a great time, you know, for us to be looking at at doing this improvement. Um, we we did something similar to this in, in my last uh, job and. Um, that was just to reduce the lighting in the, in the courthouse, the jail, and the nursing home. Um, it's about a half a million dollar project. It was able to pay, I think the payback was two and a half years uh, in, in just savings alone. So there's no upfront cost. Uh, and that was a grant through Eversource at the time. Um, so, you know, I think what Jim's saying is it, a lot of this is going to come from, it's already in our budget. Um, the reduction that, that, that we have from from, from the utilization mm -hmm. will go to you know to pay for uh, most of the um, I think most of the projects. Um, so I don't know. Uh, we could put one up. We could we could put one together in I don't know, what if, a couple what of weeks. If, what if we did this? What if we did this? I'm not making a motion. Okay. But what if we? Uh, had, uh, we voted to authorize Ken to uh, put out a request for qualifications for an energy management consultant. And then once we go through that and we see who responds to, the, to that, then we, we select that consultant. And then at that point, we can work with that consultant to, uh, to 
take the next steps because there's so many next steps that we probably need to get a consultant before we attempt to take one. So I think the first step we we need someone to oversee the whole an energy person to oversee the whole project. Right, and I think a request for qualifications you'll find that there's probably I don't know something like this. Maybe four or five, if you that. I think right. if we ask for a performance, an energy management consultant, would they'll respond from the performance-based contractors? I, I don't know what that means. Well, if you put out a thing his organization was a performance-based contract. I think what we want to do is we want to don't don't want to go that uh, block ourselves into that. I think what we first need is an energy management consultant. Just like we would hire an attorney, you know, we don't have to really define what that attorney is going to do yet. We first need to have a consultant to tell us what it is we want to do, much like we will hire an attorney to advise us on what we should do. So I think the first step is to put out a request for qualifications and have it just be simple. We request for qualifications for energy mount, uh, management companies and then we can you know, Ken will review those and say, well, they say they're qualified, but we don't think they are. Oh, they're qualified, they go in this pile. And we winnow out uh, those who we feel are qualified. And then, so did your company respond to an energy management consultant request? Um, so uh, if, if you were asking uh, to me, uh, <coughs> and, and just push me around here, but... Uh, uh, to me, part of a part of this process, so if we were to respond, you're kind of getting a consultant. Um, you know, if that first thing you're doing is that consultant phase, and then you decide if you want to move ahead with anything else. You know, your evaluator. If you had a separate consultant in here, that's an approach. Um, we would not respond to a consultant thing only. Uh, where we would be interested in doing, you know, the consulting, the design, planning, build, the implementation. Um, to me, so that's an approach. I think if you went with a consultant, it's kind of like a, it's almost like design, bid, build, build, construction. You have a consulting engineer you hire um, that you pay upfront money to. They provide a prescription of, of what they want to do, um, and then you have somebody that implements it. To me, one of the differences here is that we're going to take an accountability position around cost, performance, risk, all of these things. And so so what, if, why, what, if I, somebody else's what if we did it this yeah. way? Request for qualifications for uh, energy management engineers, engineering. But he said it was a performance-based contract. I don't care what he said about it being a performance-based contract. I'm not necessarily in favor of a performance-based contract. I understand a lot of what's going on here. And I, I want to have someone that we can turn to that we decide together what we want to do. Performance-based contracts, are, they sound good, but they're limited. I, I think, I mean, uh, I think if you put something out, and I can't, are you talking about putting out a solicitation that would hire firms like us that could do a turnkey? Yeah. And then you evaluate, do you want a guarantee or not a guarantee, those kind of things. We, like do that. we want this company or this one, because we're going to do this, yeah. do, we, do sure. we want? That's why I was trying to ask how you yeah. refer to you're, your company. Yeah, okay. And I'm, yeah. you're, but you're not referring to a two-step process where you hire a consultant and that consultant helps you pick a company. You're talking about hiring. No, I like okay. to dance with the one that brings us. So I what you. I want to do is I want to have an insurance. One of the same. Well, yes, but now, when I keep saying what you told me to him, he keeps telling me, no, it's different. And it's, now uh, you're telling different. me yeah. it's the same. Well, so. He can make it fit our needs yeah, instead the, of us fitting his needs. The, the performance-based contracting is an industry term that would be recognizable. Like you could go to the internet and say, NIESCO, National Association of Energy Services Companies. It's an it's a firm that you that's uh, independently accredits, just like you have a school that gets accreditation, accredits companies like us to do a certain type of work. How you choose, do you want to have a guarantee or not, or, or all the different kind of performance-based things are, to me, part of the negotiation when you select a vendor and you determine, do I want to have a you know, piece of pie like this, or do I want to have it like this with you know, ice cream on top or not? There's different options of it, but I think you'd want to put out, to me, a one that 
uh, selects a companies that are doing this kind of work that have been around for a long time, but don't just do consulting, but do turnkey construction where, and, and have a um, demonstrated experience of, of not of designing, installing, and supporting projects over a period of time. See, see the other thing about the approach I'm talking is it allows us to look at the strength of a company too. I mean, I know Honeywell will probably be a lot stronger than Bob's uh, haberdashery and control company. You know, it's not not this Bob, but this, you know, <laughs> anyone, if you put out a request for proposal, anyone can answer it. And that's not what we want. We, you, too, a request for proposal to me in the more, uh, how I would look at it, a proposal is asking for a, a price on something. And here, you need to know what you want to buy. Right and to design the specification around the make, model, and stuff right. before you ask for a price because you can take your eye off the ball if somebody, Bob's group or whatever, comes in and they say, I'll, I'll do it for one cent, and someone says, I'll do it for ten. The irony of these kind of projects, the more you save, the more it could cost, but the greater the value. Yeah, you, do, you, don't, have, you don't have to be smart to be a low bidder. Yeah. And, and sometimes when you just look at the low price, you, you've opened up all kinds of future expenses. So, you know... Something like this, uh, I think the first step is to select the engineering company, however we go about doing it. Uh, but I don't want to lock ourselves into any sort of performance-based thing or this or that. I mean, that's all well and good, but that's down the road. It's, a, it's really a, a, I'll call it a three-step process. You have the bid, the request for qualifications, and the selection. Mm -hmm. Then you, you pick a company, and you enter into what I'll call a project development agreement. So that's yeah. the planning phase, yeah. and that development agreement includes your business criteria from a return on investment standpoint that makes sense where that plan leads to something that meets that ROI criteria. You're interested enough where you're going to support and want to move ahead with that project. Right. Uh, but it, so you have that, that planning phase of that development agreement. Where we're, then, where we're really involved with that. Correct. You're, all, you're not just bringing us a plan and saying, this is what you need to do. Correct. It's a very right. interactive process. Right. It's where we go from concept to reality. And then at that stage, you could say, thanks but no thanks. And then the third stage is that kind of more commitment where you enter into that right. construction agreement, if you will, whatever you may call it. And so, in between the second step and the third is when we have to... Uh, be communicating with the delegation and others, and that's when we start understanding more detail. But the first step is the first step. Yeah. Well, I think I think today has been very informative for me. Um, I think that there's a lot more investigation needs to be done into uh, various entities between you and the seniors and. Because we should have probably several that we send a request for call qualifications to. Oh, would would the, uh, I don't want to make a motion without a second, but I'm going to make it hope for a second. I'd like to make a motion that we instruct the uh, uh, county administrator to prepare a request for qualification for engineering services. There is. You, I know this is conversation, but do you... Do I you don't have a second, so we can't talk about oh, it. Sorry. Well, I'll, I'll second for discussion. Well, I think it's the term, engineering. Yeah, I was going to say, you, uh, the only thought that came up there, and I'm just throwing stuff out, is engineering to me means it stops at engineering. Um, to me, a consideration would be based upon uh, the conversation that Engineering you and design? Uh, I thought engineering would be design. Um, you have to well, engineering design, but but do you want to end it there, where then you have to basically take that engineering design and then put it out to bid to someone to physically do the work? Because to me, part of the process that we're talking about is having the ability to select a firm that, that gives you the option to do to work with that firm turnkey through all steps. Okay, so a lot of sense. So actually, we got to find. Some, we got to find. If we're going to do this, we want to look at all the companies. We yeah. might want to. Yeah. Um, and, Mary, so to speak, for the next seven years. If I could modify my motion, what, what do I have, Cheryl? Uh, you, uh, you made the motion to instruct the county administrator to prepare uh, a request for qualifications for an uh, energy management. Let's, yeah, let's change it. Let's change it. Energy engineering. Energy management, engineering, and 
uh, implementation. Um, I know what you're saying, and, I, yeah. and I'm not. And I'm not opposed to it. But what I don't want to do is have the motion lock us in to the, if we select someone that we're going to commit to doing any work. No, I, I, you we know, may have you do all kinds of things and not do it. Where I'm, where my head is at, is that um, you absolutely wouldn't by by entering a motion to put out a bid, committing to do any work. You'd be committing to go through process, review firms, select the firm, enter into kind of that planning phase as a as a next step. Um, I think you, when you put something out like this, there needs to be a, a reasonable amount of specificity of what you are asking for, um, or you'll have, um, you know, because a component of this is, you just said it's a long-term relationship. Um, if somebody, if you are going to have a guarantee component, there's different ways to guarantee. A guarantee is to me is only as good as the words. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt you. Cause, okay, so that motion again, Cheryl, the way that I just changed it, I want to put one more thing in there that will work. Okay. Um, Strath County Minister should prepare an RFQ for energy management engineering. Uh, and, to, and to bring the, the draft of that uh, request for qualifications to the commission is for review and approval. In other words, he can spell out those details. We don't need to try to do a motion. It covers everything. If Ken writes out a request for qualifications, he can talk with whoever he has to talk with to get the language yeah. right. right. Bring it back to us next week. We can do it. See if it's what we want. I'm not even sure this is something that we should be considering. I mean, I think we should maybe consider it, but, but well, it's, it's a pretty big jump all at once. I think that... Uh, well, it's a, it's you know, going to start someplace. It's, a, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, actually it's a the, quite the a casual home, step. It's the nursing jump. home is five years old. That should be pretty energy efficient. Yeah, but you don't know that. This isn't a jump. This is a step. Mm -hmm. it's it's not not a this is a baby step forward. This isn't any type of committal at all. This is saying... We like to have someone come in and tell us what we should do. Yes, That's yeah, basically think, all it is. I think this is non-committal. This step, right? And, um, and when you just just a simple energy management, this, uh, the nursing home's uh, a little over five years old. This lighting here is five years old. It's already outdated. Mm -hmm. We can already save money by replacing that. And then, I'm just talking about lighting alone. We need a company. We need somebody professional yeah. like this gentleman uh, to come in and, and, and find these places where we can save money. And I think this is a good baby step. Yeah, I don't think it's a jump forward. No. I think it's a step in the right direction. Because when I don't even have a second on the motion. I don't yeah, no, second, it's second. It's okay. When we were at Interlakes, I mean, we we looked at their lighting, and it was LED lighting, and it, I think it was brighter than this. Oh yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And how long does LED light lights last for? Hundred thousand hours. Yeah, I guess some of it can be hundred thousand hours as far as the manufacturer rating. Conway yeah. Con Con is replacing half of the street lights with LEDs. We pay back on it something like two years. So mm. It's a lot of money up front, but it's like three, year three we're saving money. We're due for a lamp replacement yeah. on the campus here. And I think by having someone involved in the early stages, then we're not just going around throwing darts at the right. wall saying we need to fix this, we need to fix this, we need to fix this. Oh, we can wait on that. Well, we, we really need to understand what we should do. I, I can tell if you anything. that oftentimes um, it may just be a, uh, the newer buildings that we go into <coughs> are the better savings opportunities and that can be a function of, of how they were constructed. Sometimes you you throw out a number and then you back into that number that's the construction cost and the, the stuff that gets cut mm -hmm. is the stuff that can save on cost. Um, building on, you know, So we've gone into numerous LEED certified buildings that are maybe two years out of construction and always find opportunity and um, right or wrong. So I don't, I, I don't, I will say the nursing home is probably 90% efficient as far as our conversation, but I would also say this is, this is in dire need of some improvements. This, this is probably one of the most inefficient government buildings that I'm aware of. I don't know about the jail. I haven't been over there. The bond's up this year. We're going to fix it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it.
It needs help too. Well, I'm talking, yeah, I, and, and, and I think that's why this is a good first step. Select a company to help us. Yes, sir. It, uh, on the subject, but partly off the subject, do you work with the um, Justice Department? You can come by here at any hour of the night, and it looks like it's middle of the day. Over there. Over there. Yeah. You know, why, why don't they have the same automatic shutoff lights that we have here? Because they don't have you running it. Well, I don't want to be in open. It's not a county. But, you know, somebody could make the suggestion that maybe maybe the, the state should look at a program, too. The state does do mm -hmm. programs like this, actually. Um, and uh, um, so I can't speak for that building, but the state does have programs that they have implement doing contracting, just as we're discussing today. Jason? I just go out there on classes I'm taking. I sit with a lot of the engineers from the state, and part of their only job is actually looking at lighting. Like, there's a project they're working on right now in Concord and just in one of the parking garages. It's something like a million plus project, but the savings on it for just changing the lights out pays itself back in less than two years. And so they take on these large projects, and the state does do that, and they're doing that in state in stages. So they're going through their buildings, they're going through everything, cost savings and energy savings. So they are doing those projects. What's that? Oh yeah, even on some day room four, we we switched out from um, the old lighting into the new LED. Uh, LED. Yeah. LED lighting. Uh, we made that change last year and put a little bit of money into it because uh, for us, we were replacing bulbs about every couple of months and the cost savings of just switching it over to LED from the, <laughs> just switching bulbs out in one year, pay back, paying back for those bulbs, plus it's less heat that's up there um, on the unit itself. Um, so we started changing out some of our, our lighting as, as we're moving along. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to have Ken do a request for qualifications from a form of energy management performance based company. <laughs> Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. And one abstention. Because I don't know enough. So, but you're bringing this back for us to look at when you mm -hmm. get it done. And I don't think it has to be next week. When you, okay. when you get it done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your time. Nice thank you day. for all the information. Thank you. Now it's going to take me at least a week to follow up and do the homework. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, Mr. Um, shall we go on to the right to know discussion? Mm, we've got Jason here. We can just do the, the, the jail uh, contract, if we could. Oh, yeah. This, this one here. Yes. That is with the Nursing Association, right? Caring Nursing Agency, yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Caring Nursing Agency. Yes, and you wanted us to get more information. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe the other one had the questions back, Mr. Housel. I can't, yeah. This, this, I'm going to have to shift gears real bad because I forget what my questions were. Uh, you wanted to know if County can add it to the insurance, insurance. Por portion of it was. want to see if they had their own workman's comp. They do for their work for people on workman's comp. Um, and if we'll mind you want to change, which they did change. So uh, you know, everything was added that you, you asked for was basically done. We also looked at the contract over at the nursing home, and they have the exact same contract as this contract using the exact same company. And how has been very happy with them for a number of years with, the, with these people. Okay, so we got we just look at this mom. Yes, sir. Um, Jason, I know we've been over this probably a dozen times, and I know you're having a hard time staffing the um, nurses over there. Mm -hmm. What prevents us, they're non-union, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. What prevents us from doubling their pay or 
paying a time and a half or they get some incentive to come here and work? Well, I get time and a half. We, we only authorize the three full-time positions. And you have seven, you have seven like days that. a week to cover 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. with three people. So you still need days off. People call up sick, and that's the least a Saturday. You can, there's only so many hours that three people can cover. So is it, is it basically it's a, a shortage in the budget, not? Yes and no. You, you, putting another full-time person on is going to cost you a lot more money. Um, and then again, you still have to have time off and, and cover for sick and vacation <laughs> and everything else. So how many hours a week of nursing do you? We run from the weekends at 7 to 7, and the rest of the week is from 7 a.m. to about 10.30. And this is only for an eight-hour shift occasionally. It's not 12. You most, most likely going to most likely gonna take care of at least three of our Saturdays, right. which will alleviate some stress of uh, these people doing overtime over and over again. And uh, when somebody calls out sick, you have really no coverage. They try to do the best they can. They have for years, but it's, uh, I've exactly. lost two nursing directors over, over the amount of hours. Yeah. <laughs> and pay yes, foundation. I make a motion that we uh, uh, enter into this agreement with uh, the county and care nursing facilities in accordance with. That's it, I guess. Make a motion we will enter into this agreement with. Caring Nursing Staff Agency, LLC. Are we entering into the agreement with it, or is yes, the yeah. jail entering into no, the agreement? We are. We are. Okay. Do I hear a second? So I'll second it for the discussion. Discussion. I was happy that they put in uh, the uh, workers' comp and the indemnification and that they're listing as a, an additional insured instead of a certificate holder. Mm -hmm. What that means is if you're a certificate holder, that means you have to work through the contract in order to gain access to the insurance company. If you're an additional insured, you can go right directly to the insurance company. So it's, it's the preferred way to go. Most people, a lot of people don't know that, but whenever you get a certificate of insurance, you want to be listed as the additional insurer, not a certificate holder. And that's what Primex always recommends that we do. Good. Yes. Uh, I'm certainly going to vote for this, but I we have a problem over there, and we've got to figure out how to solve it. Well, we are. This is our. This is how we're solving it. Well, that's one. This is one. But this is a costly way of solving it. If we have someone that goes out on, on a sick day, we pay them for the sick day. We pay these people $85 an hour. I don't see how you can say it's cheaper. Well, we'd have to hire some, we'd have to hire another full-time employee. It could be $100,000. I, I don't see how that's cheaper. And getting nurses is like, you know, it's like digging gold right now. I mean, they're short everywhere. Can I ask? <laughs> Can I ask that for the next um, three months, six months, you kind of keep a record of how um, the hours are being utilized and by whom? Sure. So that if we want to, at budget time, say we need another full-time nurse over there, um, we'll at least have some numbers to back it up. Yeah, I can give a schedule for the entire year for every hour that's used. We keep track of all that. We really don't need to that because caring nurse when they send their bill tells you who the, right. who the, who the nurse was, what Three hours, hours she what, day, worked, what day, how much it was, and how much it was. So you all the information is there. All we have to do is take a copy of it and put it in a folder, and then we can add it up at the end of the year. And he doesn't have to do the work. But he does it on his computer. Well, he won't do the work. He'll have someone else. He'll have it. someone else do it. Yeah, and tracks all hours. Anyway. So they're already, they're already tracking it. So if you could kind of look forward that when it comes budget time, we're going to ask you for that. Sure. This some somewhat related to this, but when we find ourselves incurring these costs, uh, I understand we uh, we 
we have an agreement with Stratford County to take some of their prisoners? Yes. Do we have in our the amount that we charge them, do we consider these types of costs? Are we charging enough, I guess, is Yeah, we're, we're charging enough and any medical costs. They, 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 they pay, pay for? Yes. Yeah. So uh, a nursing, <coughs> something like this, if they have one of their... It doesn't cost us any more because it's still, it's an inmate, it's an inmate, an inmate in our cyber facility. Okay. But they have medical need, medications, they, they want extra services, they pay, they pay for all that kind of stuff. All right. All right. Any other discussion? Okay, the motion has been made and seconded that we enter into this agreement with Carol... Uh, caring nurses. Caring nurses. Staffing agency. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Who said no? I said those opposed, no. Oh. Can you ready? sign it, Madam Chair? See a place to yeah, it's on the second last page. Right there. How come I'm the only one that gets to sign these money things? Because you're the one who's responsible if something happens. Yeah, thank you. And on, on our um, budget sheets, we don't have a line item strictly for. Caring nurses? Yeah, I would be so nervous. Not, not caring nurses, but for... Um, agency? Agency nurses. On our budget? Only in a nursing home. No. Wouldn't it be advantageous to have that? Yeah, we'll probably do it next year, but... And what we do have, and we, in our nursing salary line budget, is money for part-time nurses. Oh, I know that, but I just... This is the first time I've actually had to go out to using an agency because we can't get part-time nurses. I was just going to say it would be easier for anybody looking at the budget to look down the line and see agency nurses because it's built in as it is now. And you got to go dig for it. All right, Jason, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Today? Nope. <laughs> All right, I'm thank you very much. Student. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming to visit today. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, the cab next to Cabby starts April third. Just so you know. Um, I did uh, receive the MOUs for Whitehorse. We've already approved that, right? No. No. Oh, the same. No, it's the same one. They signed it, and now you have to sign it. Right, but we approved what was in it before they got. Where's the money? On the front page, number four. Except I put uh, a dollar amount per quarter and the total amount that they can receive in the budget year 2017. Okay. I, do I sign this one? All three of you sign it. I sign it. Uh, well, let's take a motion before we sign that. That's why I just up. asked three times. This was the, the same one that we had approved, I thought. No, we okay. didn't approve this. Oh. We have not approved this. All right. So whose turn is it? Dave. Come up one. I make a motion that we approve the uh, memorandum of agreement with White Horse Addiction Center. Uh, it's not dated, but it should be. I'm going to put a date on it. Three what? 22. 322, 2017. So it's debated we signed it. I second that motion. Discussion? Yes. I, 
I, I would just like to make sure, Ken, that you convey to them that uh, any budget request that we're going to have for next year is going to depend on the reporting that we have. I am, uh, as I'm sure the other are as well, very concerned and hopeful that Whitehorse's fine work will extend to the northern part of the, the county. I, and I, I want to see how much of the, that activity does take place that includes the northern part of the county as well. It's, this is a whole county uh, initiative. I, I made that point very clear to them because I knew how, how, how you, you have felt about that. So. And, and, and it's very important that they understand that because if I find that this isn't serving the entire county, I, I will be a little reluctant to continue uh, support at this level. Any other discussion? No. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded to approve the MOU from White House. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Nobody opposes it. Passed. We should have two copies, uh, original signatures. This one and one for us. Okay. Do you have theirs with original signatures? This looks like no. Okay. This is sent by an email. They were supposed to have dropped it off. They just emailed it. Uh, you well, I guess it's, oh, it's all right, but I think in, in the future okay. we should have original signatures on the documents, not. If you want, I'll have them sign another one and send it, and you can sign it next week if you want to. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. I just think in the future that uh, the signatures should be original, not copy. Okay, can we go on to the right to know request? Yes. In your packet, you'll see <clears throat> the right to know request that was sent in last year, uh, September 13th of 2016. Uh, one is on uh, one is on the uh, Delta Dental, and one is on the uh, health insurance for retirees. Um, are you all aware of what happened in those years? Yes. Not, not totally, but that doesn't really matter to me. Okay. Uh, what matters to me is that. Uh, We've had an individual exercise the right to know. They've, they've uh, initiated requests uh, in accordance with the law, in accordance to the March 6th letter from the uh, attorney, uh, the law office of Martin and Hippel, uh, specifically uh, attorney Seth Hippel. Uh, we have not complete completed uh, transmitting uh, the requested information and then unless that information is protected under some sort of confidentiality within the law, I think we need to get this information to them within uh, a reasonable amount of time uh, post haste. So when Mr. Coma came in the office to uh, scan all the documents that we had ready for him, there was an, a separate box that um, it was in my office that had uh, the other documents he was looking for for some reason. I don't know how it got in there, but it, it was missed. So that box is here. Um, and also we also have, I can tell you from 1998 to 2002, there is no information. So that information is, it's too old, it's been destroyed. Um, well, that's an easy one to respond yep. to, say we can't give it to you because we don't have it. Right. That's the Delta Dental? That's all, anything. We don't have any documents that old. We, we don't retain documents that old, except for uh, payroll checks, uh, retirement, um, but APs, um, you know, we, we don't re retain that that long. Um, and also, uh, 2006, 
it is nowhere to be found. Is there also a certain amount of statute of limitations stuff that comes into it? Yes. I think it's unfortunate if you can't find stuff because I, I'm just, that's the way I am. I like to be able to retrieve things, you know, even back decades. But I also understand that you got a storage place. Uh, if there's no microfiche or there's no microfilm or there's no data to, to share, that's different than just refusing to share it. Yep. Uh, uh, I mean, I but I think the stuff that we do have, that they made their uh, second request, that uh, we should get right on Yeah, and, and we did. Cheryl's been working on this since it first came in. Uh, and we went back down to archives and we did retrieve uh, some more documents. And so what we have available has been redacted. Um, and it's uh, ready for Mr. Como um, just to come in and scan. But I can just tell you now that he won't, there's no 98 to 2002. Well, can we convey that back to his attorney who has said that uh, he wants all cars? Yes, uh, our attorney is, is working on that. Okay. At, um, right now, she just tried calling me a little earlier. So. Okay. But, you know, I just want to keep you updated on just where, where we are with that. Um, isn't it true, Ken, that, that we, in our first response, when they asked for claims, that we told them that we don't pay the claims, the claims are paid by the insurance company, so we have no record of it? Yes, we don't receive claims in this office. So then they come back and ask for, ask for the same information? Do we tell them a second time that maybe they'll get it? So, um, we don't have information to give them. We don't have information to give them. Right. The point was we told them that and they came back and asked it again. Yeah, we can tell them again. Yeah, that's, that's fine. You know, it's, we're not trying to withhold anything. There's no. just a lot of stuff we had to go through. And, right, right. Um, and he just, and we, we missed that box, so. Um, that's our fault. That is our fault. And, you know, I'm going to apologize to him as soon as I see him. Do you have any idea, rough idea, of how much time we've spent on this project? I would say... Um, Without exaggerating. No, not, probably probably 16 hours. More than that? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, is, it's important to know that these things cost. But I put that into the category of we live in a democracy by a bunch of laws and sometimes it just isn't economically efficient to be a democracy. But we have to accept that. We have to accept that for the sake of the people that we serve having a comfort level with us. And if it costs us money to, to do that, then that's part of it. Have we ever looked at um, uh, electronic storage? I don't know. Like yes. the scanning of documents? and Yes. We just did, didn't we, with the registry? Yeah. No, I'm talking about We had, our, we our had stuff, somebody come in here. I wasn't on the delegation. I just, on my weekly visit here on Wednesdays, they had somebody come in and make a presentation. I think they were from Bedford or Concord, and maybe Damon was here. And yeah. they were going to keep them in the clouds or do something with them. It was about the nursing home. Or oh, okay. A little bit like Barracuda. Parmenia? I think it's called Barracuda. Uh, Barracuda no, there's Barracuda, the backup system that we, we pay for now. This was a corporation that, that scanned your papers. Um, papers and filed them and kept them for you. Yeah, I remember something like that. That's right. not a bad way to go if we can afford it. The registry just finished at it a, few, a year or so ago of taking all the deeds all the way back to the Original. Yeah, I, I know. Okay. I'm about to talk about APs. And but stuff I, was like that. Wondering, yeah, I was wondering how long that, that would give you an idea because, I mean, those are just a, a few number of papers actually compared to the archives that the office has. Well, maybe it was one. It had to have been back 2010. Um, now that I think about it, I think it was. Uh, Commissioner Kenny and Sorensen and myself that listened to this gentleman, and he gave quite a presentation. Be because there, there is a retention policy from DRA, yeah. 
And these documents that the APs, we only have to retain them one year after they're audited. So, um, so what we don't want to do is have a whole lot of boxes kicking around with papers that no one's ever going to read. Right. But it would be nice if we had these on some sort of digital right. format where people needed them. They could generate right. a piece of paper. Right. I, I, I think that would be something we should look into to see if we can uh, make it easier for retrieval. Because I don't know what's going to happen in the future to our storage area. Right. You know, because this one only can only hold, I mean, this one down here holds half of it's for the county attorney's records, the other half is for the sheriff, the dis, um, dispatch, the commissioners, registered deeds. Right. Um, so a lot of people, you know, HR, a lot of people store. Wouldn't the attorney be able to store some of this stuff if we had the right system? Yeah, she, she is looking at that, I think, as well. And this is, this is an instance where we don't need uh, the attorney's office or the deeds office to do something and then we do something else. We should be collaborating and see if we can get a single system. But with different sites, because her I understand. You know, I understand. You could, have, you, could have, uh, you could have cyber locks and all that yeah. stuff in there. But uh, she went out and bought a system. If the attorney went and bought a system, we bought a system. That may be spending more money than we need. Yeah. Are there any actual paper things that we have to keep besides contracts? Yes. Oh, yeah. You have to keep um, uh, something in indefinite. You have to keep things in indefinitely. Um, I didn't bring it up with me, but there's a whole list from uh, uh, DRA what you have to keep and what you uh, don't in paper have to keep. form in hard copy. No, no. Well, that, that's what I was saying. You have to retain it. Doesn't are there things in, in hard form that we have to keep? No. There's some things you should keep, like the Declaration of Independence, and, you know, certain documents. That <laughs> but uh, nothing I agree yeah. So every, all the daily stuff could go on a, yes. some sort of a, a cloud system. Well, so you have to have someone scan it yeah. into the system, too. Well, once it's up and running, it'd just be a matter of saying, oh, get this bill, put it in there, and then it's yeah. cool. you've got it. And you don't have to go far into a file looking for right. it. But I guess how would you file it? Say like um, all of our APs, would you file it alphabetically? So when you scan it, you have to send it to a to a to, to I think a, a Cisco file. Cross reference. I don't know. I think it, it is, the, the system would want to be built on one where you could do easy retrieval. Yeah. It would be a cross reference where you could do it by date or by. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I mean, we have a lot of vendors we have. Oh, we have a lot of vendors. Thousands. But, but the, you know, the way we do it now is we alphabetize them yeah. by year. By year. So, I mean, and it's easy to find them if they're not put in storage. That was the issue. Put in storage, that was a lot of boxes to go through. And we did miss, um, what was it, five years of the health because the health insurance company had changed. Changed, right. And so we... We weren't looking for that particular um, vendor. We went from one vendor to the next, and then from that vendor went to another vendor. And if you weren't here in those years, you wouldn't know when it switched. You know. So um, we don't need a motion on this. No, just, no, just this it's just information. FYI. All right. But I would like to uh, maybe put on next week's agenda about some sort of a uh, electronic system to store this on. Oh, but if we could give me a little more than a week. Yeah, I think a couple of weeks. I think, I think one of the things that this uh, this request for right under right to know has done is spur this conversation on. I don't know if you have to solve this within any particular time frame. I think it needs to be on the to-do list. How, yeah. how can we best approach uh, a storing information in such a way that we can retrieve them more efficiently than we have to now. Not electronic. It's just paper and having to go through boxes and things. It's kind of Put that on your to-do list for whenever you get around to it. Okay. <coughs>
did the jail contract? More field discussion. Right. Um, last week at the delegation meeting, you were able to have them allow you to use that lower field. Is that what I got? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So how are we going to do it? Well, one of the things I would do is I'd advertise it in the market bulletin. Where? Market bulletin. Oh, yeah. And then whatever you want to do from that, that's free. Yeah, it, it goes that's the state bulletin, you mean? Huh? The, uh, the, the weekly market bulletin, it's got all the prices per pound. Yeah. And I, I, I think we ought to, what's it cost to put an ad in? Carroll County Independent, or the United State News. Oh, one of those good papers? Or any of them. They're all good. Well, the one up north especially. Uh, the one up north is a rip-off. <laughs> yeah, well, the one up north should put in there a nice article about the fact that we're doing a free lease on a piece of yeah. four acres. Well, and they should take a picture of it and well, put it, it in. Free lease? I, I didn't hear that. No, no, I, it, his, 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 yeah, we, well, the, the Northern paper does it, but they we headlines it today. But here's, here's the thing. I think we should put in, in on, our paper up north and paper down south that we that this uh, this field's available. And the reason I think we should say, do that is that uh, there's a number of things. You'll find someone, perhaps, best way to find someone, best way to find someone locally. But also lets everyone know that we're not just shutting down farm operations. We're, we're, we're aware of our assets. We know that we have a field and that there's a proper way for you, us to use it. And those people who are interested in this may feel a little bit comfortable knowing that we're not just abandoning and farming operations uh, as we have the ongoing discussion. So I, I think we should put an ad in the papers okay. asking people to who are in, might be interested in fielding the goats that we have a space for. Well, she, you know, if we're going to worry about uh, the cost of everything, the market bulletin goes to 22,000 people, and it's free. Well, there you go. Craigslist is free. There you go. I just, I it was just an free. idea of PR that I put out there. Yeah, we uh, the Carol, there's a Carroll County Ag site, too. I think, I think my, 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 my idea has merit <laughs> as we go forward. Uh, with, uh, you know, how are we going to use the agricultural uh, expressions of the county. And also, I'm sure Damon's been paying attention to this conversation, and there may be a little blurb that this is what we want to do, maybe. I don't write the paper for them, but that's a good story. We're not a picture in that field would be really pretty in the paper. So what are we doing with it? I, I, I guess I don't understand. We're opening it up to someone who wants to, to use it to, to herd grazing Sheep, sheep, critters. It could goes. be anything. Anything. So we can't. Cows. Yeah, but I don't well, think. I don't think a cow would cow would drive would down too fast. Yeah, you'd, you'd be. You need a goat or a sheep to something. You want. The object is to make it so that it doesn't turn into brush. Goats would be. Oh, the okay. They, they they chew it down. So we gain because the field isn't turning into a forest. Forest. Mm -hmm. And and. Uh, you know, we're, we're using a piece of our property in an efficient manner, and you know, we're not looking to make money at it, but we're looking to utilize it. Actually, if they did rotational grazing, they could probably put cows in there and they could. get it done. Yeah, it could turn into something, but I think the, the, the big part of this is the delegation and the commission together has said, hey, look, here is a valuable agricultural piece of property that we want to utilize. I think that's big. I, you and know, keep in proper condition. In, right. In the, in the heat of the discussion about the farm and all that's going on, I think it's a good way to let people know we're, we're looking at all aspects of it. Damon? <laughs> so can I ask, this, this field that you're talking about, was it a hay field at one point? It, it's too wet to hay um, nine out of ten years. 